Now we are moving on to part one for preparation of salts, our preparation of copper sulfate. For this, I will need a 250 mil beaker. Then I have gone ahead and pre-weighed my copper to oxide. You need to decide how many moles of which you are going to use and then get the exact mass that you need. I have chosen to use 0 0.05 moles, which means I need 3.978 grams, which I have here in my weigh boat. We are using 0 0.05 moles of copper oxide because I want to produce exactly 0 0.05 moles of our copper sulfate product. Then we are going to need to add 6 molar sulfuric acid, you need to add an amount of sulfuric acid, which is equivalent to five times the amount of moles of copper oxide you have put in. So we need 0.25 moles of sulfuric acid, since I'm using 0 0.05 moles of copper oxide. So I have 41.7 milliliters of my six molar sulfuric acid. This volume is exactly 0.25 moles of sulfuric acid. So now I can take, add my copper oxide to my beaker. Then I am going to flush my weigh boat with sulfuric acid in order to make sure that I get all my copper oxide. Now I've gotten all of the copper oxide out of my weigh boat. So I will add the last of my sulfuric acid, but now we are going to need to speed up the reaction. So I'm going to take and add glass beads. You will have glass beads provided in lab. I'm going to add exactly 10 of them. Now that I have added 10 glass beads, I can go ahead, bring over my hot plate set my beaker on top, and I want to gently heat my solution to its boiling point. You can always use your watch glass to cover the top of your beaker in order to achieve boiling at a faster rate. Since I want to gently heat my solution, I do not want to take my hot plate all the way up to 10 for heat. I want to have it at more of a mid setting. I'm going to go with a seven. And then as I see my solution start to get warmer, I can then increase the heat a little more to gradually bring it up to boiling. Once we get to boiling, we will just continue gently boiling our solution until we have seen all of our copper oxide dissolve and the solution becomes homogeneous. As we wait for our solution to begin boiling, I can gather the next materials that I'm going to need. I'll need a 100 mil beaker, my glass stir rod, and a hot hand protector. This is because once our solution is homogeneous, we'll be taking and pouring the solution down the stir rod into our 100 mil beaker. This is in order to gather all of the solution in a smaller beaker so that we can cool it and get it ready for filtration. As you can see, as our solution is now gently boiling, our copper is slowly dissolving into solution as we reach our way to homogeneous, and our solution has turned from the light blue color that it was into a deeper blue color. So I'm just going to lower the heat actually now since it is boiling rather vigorously. I do not want the solution to boil too heavily. And as I look now, I'm not seeing any of my copper left, so I'm going to take and remove my watch glass, then I'm going to take my hot hand protector and lift up my solution, and I can see that there is no longer any copper left inside of it. As you can see, only our glass beads are left, so now I'm going to take, bring over my small beaker, then I'm going to get my glass stir rod, then I want to put my glass stir rod along the mouth of my beaker, that way when I take it and I start pouring, my solution goes down my stir rod into my beaker. This will allow me to get as much of my solution as possible. 
with minimal loss anywhere along the line. I want to try to decant this as easily as possible without retaining any of my glass beads. As you can see, I have very little left of my copper solution. I'm going to try a little bit to get any last bit of my solution. I can see a couple of drops forming on my stir rod, and that is all I'm going to be able to get. So I can set that off to the side. And now I have my solution here, which I will also take and set off to the opposite side. I'm now going to need to take care of my glass beads that I have here and my beaker. So I'm going to take and wash my glass beads in the beaker with just some water. This solution will then go into waste. Next, I will pick out the beads, give them a short rinse, and then place them into my used glass beads container. This is so that the beads can be thoroughly cleaned at the end of lab and be reused. Now that all of my beads are out, I can go and take this, wash it out, and put the solution into waste, and then clean out the beaker for reuse. Now that I've gone and cleaned out my beaker, I have taken and filled it about halfway to three quarters full with an ice water slurry. So I can now take, add my original beaker and my 100 mil beaker to it to start getting this to cool. We are going to need to assemble a vacuum filtration setup while this is cooling. As well, we need to wait until our solution has cooled below 5 degrees Celsius. So I can go ahead and dip my thermometer in to see what it is currently at. I'm getting a reading of above 40. So I'm just going to go ahead and take and make a little setup with my thermometer using a single burette clamp and our ring stand. I'm just going to set this in here with the thermometer only touching the solution, not touching the walls. I'm going to leave this and keep monitoring it and wait for it to go below five degrees while I assemble my vacuum filtration setup. Now we can move on to part 1B, preparation of potassium aluminum sulfate. In order to do this, I have my 250 mil beaker freshly washed. I have taken and measured 0.675 grams of aluminum. This is because I have chosen to make 0.025 grams of my potassium aluminum sulfate. So I'm going to take and add in my aluminum. Then I need to add in my potassium hydroxide and my water. These are also five times the amount of moles of my aluminum. So I'm using 25 milliliters of potassium hydroxide and 1.35 mils of water. You yourself will need to do your calculations to figure out exactly how much you need to use when you add in your own. As you can see, our reaction is going. We are going to be heating it again, so I had to go get my glass beads. I will need to add 10 glass beads. Now that I have added my 10 glass beads, I can take and bring in my hot plate again and I will take and add my watch glass on top and slowly heat the solution. I need to correct what I said earlier. I said five times the amount of moles of our potassium hydroxide compared to aluminum. It is two times the amount of moles, not five times the amount of moles. We do not want to use too much of either solution. So to verify again, I used 0 0.025 moles of my aluminum, which meant since I needed to use two times the amount, I used 0 0.05 moles of potassium hydroxide. Since my solution was heated, I can remove my watch glass. I am stirring with a glass stir rod just to make sure that all of my aluminum is reacted. Looking into my beaker, I can see that all of my aluminum has in fact reacted and left us with a black powder. So I can take my hot hand protector, remove it from my hot plate, set it down, and as you can see, you know I have a black powder on the bottom of our beaker rather than our silver aluminum. Next I am going to need to make the ice water slurry. So I have a 600 mil beaker here. I have my DI water 
and I have some partially made slurry from before, which I can add into here. So I can add a little more water to get this full. As we cool, we are going to likely need to get some more ice to refresh this step. But now we can just take, make sure that our beaker sits in here nice as it cools. And then once it is cool, we can go ahead and take and remove our glass beads and move on to our next step, which is adding our sulfuric acid. So now that it has been about five minutes and our solution is cool, I can go ahead and remove my beaker. I'm going to need to remove my glass beads that I have inside here. So I have my tweezers here and I have my container for used glass beads. So I will go through and slowly pick out each of the beads, placing them into my container of used beads. Now that I've counted my 10 glass beads out, I can place that away. Then I'm going to need to take my solution here. I'll be adding six molar sulfuric acid to it in order to neutralize potassium hydroxide. We are going to be testing using pH paper. That way we know when it is done based on when we are no longer a basic solution. So I will start by placing my beaker back in my ice bath since a lot of heat will be generated by adding our sulfuric acid. You can see that a precipitate has formed, so I'm going to take and stir using my stir rod. Now I need to get a piece of pH paper ready. I'm going to be taking my stir rod, which has been in my solution, and I just want to touch it to the pH paper. As I can see, we are at red, which means we are now acidic. We are no longer basic for our pH. This means we do not need to add any more sulfuric acid to our solution. And we instead can just continue to stir. So as I'm stirring here, I'm seeing that I have some black solid still left over that is undissolved in our solution. So I'm going to take and bring back our hot plate and gently heat the solution until all the black flecks that are inside of here are dissolved. Our solution is almost clear again. We just need to stir and heat a little longer. Since our solution is just about done, I'm going to be prepared for pouring the solution into a 100 ml beaker. My solution has become clear, so I'm now going to go ahead and pour it down my stir rod. The solution is very hot, so I'm actually going to try to pinch the stir rod using my hot hand protector up here and then pour down and now I can take and cool this solution in an ice bath just as I did before so I have my 250 ml beaker with ice I'm going to place my solution in there and now this can cool down and we can filtrate it once it is cool here we have our vacuum apparatus set up for our vacuum filtration of our copper sulfate. So our copper sulfate is sitting at 3.3 degrees Celsius, which is below our five degrees Celsius minimum. So I can go ahead and take this out, place it on my counter, and then I will turn on my vacuum apparatus. I don't want full vacuum, I only want partial vacuum right now. So I'm making sure to listen and look at my apparatus to see that the vacuum is not too strong. Then I can take and pour. So now I have my stir out here. I'm mixing my crystals together with my remaining solution here to make a slurry. And then I'm going to pour my slurry onto my funnel. I still have a lot of crystals left, so I'm going to just keep stirring and pouring. I can take my 95% ethanol. I have pre-measured out five milliliters of ethanol into each of these three graduated cylinders. This is for expediency of the recording. 
you will need to measure out replicates each time. And these are going to be our washes. So I'm going to add five milliliters of our beaker, swirl around our crystals, and then pour and collect. And then again, another wash. And then one final time. So I have now washed my crystals and gathered them as much as I can onto my filter paper that is inside the apparatus. So now I am going to take and pull full vacuum in order to try and dry the crystals as much as possible, getting as much air through them as I can. And we are going to let the air draw through our apparatus for about 10 minutes. Our 10 minutes have passed for our drying using our vacuum apparatus. So I'm going to leave my vacuum apparatus on full and then I'm going to take my stir rod and spread around my crystals and I'm just observing to make sure that there are no very deep blue pockets of moisture left over in my crystals. Now that I can see that there is not any moisture left, I can turn off my vacuum, remove my funnel, do one last thorough check through. As you can see, I have nice light blue copper crystals. So now I'm going to take and transfer my crystals to my vial here. I have pre-weighed my vial and cap together. That way I know exactly how much this vial weighs now. And now I need to transfer my crystals into my vial. Normally I would make a sort of semi-funnel using my filter paper, but due to the sheer amount of crystals that I have on my filter paper, it would be unwise to remove it since I would likely lose a lot of crystal to spill over from the edge. So I'm just instead being very cautious and slowly gathering quantities of my crystal. Now that I have gathered the large majority of my crystals, I can go and kind of sweep away the edges of my filter paper, and then I can fish my filter paper out, which contains the last remnants of my crystals. I can gather it into a fold and just slowly pour the remainder into my vial. So now I have very few crystals left here. So I'm just going to take, very gently push the remainder into my vial. And now I have gathered the vast majority of my crystals from my filter funnel and my filter paper into my vial, which can now be reweighed so that I have my current mass of crystals and then I can see how much they weigh when they are dried from filtration. Here is our vacuum apparatus set up for our potassium aluminum sulfate that we have just made. It is chilled below five degrees Celsius as we want, so I can now go ahead and turn on my vacuum apparatus. I don't want it to be fully on, so I'm listening and looking to check for any airflow. So I'm going to take and stir up our solution. Since our solution has settled, we need to stir it up so that we do not leave any of our solid behind. So I'm going to take and pour down my glass stirring rod a portion of the solution. And now that I'm left with just a little bit of solution left in my beaker, I'm going to stir to get it into solution, turn it into a slurry, not get it into solution, and then pour. And I'm just going to work down my solid as much as I can into my filtration apparatus. Next, I'm going to begin my 95% ethanol washes. For sake of expediency, I have already pre-measured three 5 milliliter ethanol washes. When you perform this in lab, you are going to need to use just one or two of your 10 mil graduated cylinders and measure them out in step. I'm going to add my ethanol, stir to quickly gather as much crystal remaining, and then quickly pour. 
This is to both wash my crystals and gather as much of my remaining potassium aluminum sulfate. And then again, pour quickly to wash all the crystals. And then our last one, we have now gathered as much of our crystal as we can from our beaker. I can try to get just a little bit left from a couple of scrapings, but I will not be able to get it perfectly. So now that that is done, I will turn our vacuum to high, and then I will have my vacuum pull air through our solid for 10 minutes. This will allow it to dry, and we will come back in 10 minutes to collect it. 10 minutes have passed on our potassium aluminum sulfate that we have been drying. So I can go ahead and now stop my vacuum and start spreading around my crystals just to check to make sure that they are dry, no very deep pockets of moisture remaining. It does not appear that there is too much. So I'm going to now take and take my vial. I have pre-weighed exactly how much the vial and lid are together so then I can take and remove and I can stir and gather my solid to one side. So as you can see we have a grayish white powder. The gray shows that there is likely a little bit of moisture remaining but not too much and then I can gather that to one side so I can slowly take fractions of it and add it to my vial. Typically, I might use the filter paper as a sort of funnel in order to gather this a lot faster. However, due to the amount of crystals that we have grown, I need to take a slower method in order to gather them carefully and accurately. I don't want to lose any crystals or that many from dropping off the filter paper or the side of the funnel, so that is why I am just taking my time and slowly gathering them here. I have now gathered the vast majority of the crystals into my vial, so I am now just scraping the edges of my filter paper and my funnel in order to gather the last of my crystals onto the filter paper, which I can then go ahead and fish out on an edge. And as I pull it up, I'm going to be taking, oh no, I'm going to be taking and folding it into a crease and I will go ahead and scrape the filter paper and then I can take and finish off the last little bit of remaining crystals inside my funnel. And now I've gathered as much of my crystals as I can into my vial. As you can see, inside of our filter flask, you can see some of the solid is still sitting in the water. This means that our solution may not have been cold enough to totally precipitate out all of our solid. This is also evident, as you can see, I have quite a bit of solid that came out from the end of my Buchner funnel. This is likely from the solution being pulled in under vacuum and precipitating out once it had already passed through the filter paper. So this shows that we could have let our solution cool a little more since now we know we have lost probably about two to three percent of our mass just onto our bench top and into our filter flask. However, now we can go ahead, cap our solid, and get our final mass. Here's our potassium aluminum sulfate after we have collected it from our filtration. We can see that we have a final mass of 16.898 grams. I have that recorded. We had a starting mass of our vial label and cap of 7.403 grams so that means that we know that we have about 9.5 grams of solid. Here is our copper sulfate that we have collected after filtration. As you can see we are ending with a final mass of 18.826 grams of copper sulfate. We started with a empty vial with the cap and label at 7.505 grams this shows that we have about 11 grams of copper inside of our vial. Now that we have measured out the mass of our copper sulfate and our potassium aluminum hydrate, we are going to need to store them. Your group will only have one of these crystals, either potassium aluminum sulfate or copper sulfate, but both of them are stored the same. Simply uncap your vial 
place it inside a glass beaker, put your cap with it. The exact same method is done regardless of whichever crystal you have made. And then you take and will place either one of your beakers into your drawer to let these dry over the week.